So today is going to be about regular annuities, not just regular annuities, uh, calculating how much it is in the future, but something called present value. So I'm going to call this first analogy, I'm going to repeat what we've done uh, before as future value. And this thing I hear, I'm going to call it present value. The names that are given this way because of what we are trying to figure out or what the main pot of money involves. So let me try to, um, let's see, let me try to make this analogy work. Let's pretend every stick figure, <laughs> stick figure, every stick figure that I draw is every compounding period. So keep it simple, every year. The next year, because I roll the snowball, the snowball will become bigger or smaller. Bigger. So I'll draw it a little bit bigger. But as it gets bigger, I am putting money in. So will that snowball become bigger or smaller? Again, bigger. Good. And then when I roll it, because I rolled it, will the snowball become bigger or smaller? Bigger. And on top of that, because one year has passed, I'm putting more money in. Will the snowball become bigger or smaller? Bigger. I think you get the point. And then I put some more money in and I'll draw one more. So both, both my deposit as well as my rolling makes the snowball bigger. So far so good? Okay. Now remember, this snowball could be your investment. I could call this I, 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 and I. It could also be debt, 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 debt. Does the story make sense if I call this debt? What do I mean by putting money into a snowball called debt? What am I doing in real life? I'll say it one more time. What does it mean to say I'm putting money into a snowball called debt? What's happening in real life? What am I doing? Yep. In other words, I'm borrowing money. Absolutely. So in, no matter what the scenario is, this could work. Check out this next scenario. Now I'm going to call this debt again, okay? But in fact, let's pretend it's like a house. I borrowed a big buttload of money, okay? What happens when I roll the snowball? Does it get bigger or smaller? I'll say it one time. I have a huge ball of debt. If I roll that snowball and it gr grows in interest, does my debt increase or decrease? I'm rolling in interest. So my snowball, I'm rolling it, rolling it. Does it become bigger or smaller? So get outside the, the, the realm of logic here. I borrowed money from the bank. And if time passes, will that debt get bigger or smaller? Interesting, interesting everyone. I'll say it one more time. Let's pretend I borrowed $100 from the bank. Forget that. I used $100 on my Visa card. I just let it sit there. Over time, what happens to that $100? They charge you and it grows in interest. What if I borrowed five hundred thousand dollars to help buy my house? If I just left it there, what happens to that snowball? It grows out of control. Yeah. So what do you want to do? You want to pay it off, right? And here's what's happening. Present value is where. Because the ball is growing out of control, 
You're not putting in money. You're trying to take a big chunk out. So your interest is growing, but your payment is trying to make it smaller. So yeah, I'm making it smaller, but it's uh, it doesn't get that much smaller just yet. And then the next compounding period, what do you do? I try to take, so let's, how about I do this, right? I try to take a big chunk out. In the next period, I'm gonna try to take a big chunk out. So the interest is growing, but you paid into it. So assuming everything goes as planned, your snowball will be slightly smaller than before. And then you pay and then you make another payment. In other words, you are taking money out. And so the snowball gets a little bit smaller. You see it? Gradually, it's very, very slow, but that is what we are trying to do with present value. Present value is any situation when I make the snowball into zero. That's the new element. Up until now, every question I gave you, you were rolling the interest to make it bigger and you were putting money in to also make it bigger. Here, the interest and the amount of money you work with are in opposite directions. Interest will always make it bigger, but you are trying to make it smaller. Let me give you another example. What if we were talking about your retirement savings? Hint, hint, everyone. This is super important because this is your assignment. Let's pretend this is your retirement savings. You work your butt off from the age of um, rolling a, a paper route, right? Taking your bike, 4.30 or five o'clock in the morning, throwing newspapers at people. I guess nowadays people don't do that because even newspapers are online, right? Is any parents here, anyone's guardians or parents still read a physical newspaper? Yeah, that's a, that's a lost art, I swear. It's on the same, yeah, same thing. It's, it, I, it, I think it's a lost art. It's the same level as, um, you know when you get a gift? Did you know a long time ago, people gave cards back saying thank you for the gift? That was courtesy. It was common courtesy that when you receive the gift, you say it, you give a gift back saying thank you. At least a little card as an appreciation. Nowadays, people don't really do that. I think it's on that same level. Anyways. Let's say you've worked your butt off, okay, since the age of 12, and you've built up a huge fortune when you retire. What's happening as time passes? Well, you're not working anymore, so you take a little bit of money to spend to make yourself happy, to buy good food. That's supposed to be a, a shank, okay? Um, or maybe you want your pasta, or you know, you get what I'm saying, okay? You, whatever you need to do to live your retirement life. So this pot becomes bigger or smaller. Smaller, of course. But because you're still keeping it in the bank, it grows in interest. So your retirement fund was spent, but it also grew. And then you spend some more. So it gets smaller. But because of time, it grows. So it's this little, this weird vibration of in and out and in and out and bigger and smaller and bigger and smaller. And that is present value. How do we distinguish between future value and present value? The best way I can hint this is to give you a kind of a, um, it's not a jingle. Okay? You, so future value, the best way to describe it is making the pot bigger as it grows in interest. In, in a nutshell, that's the best way I can describe it. PV is making the pot smaller making the, oh my goodness, really? Come on making the pot smaller as it grows in interest. 
Read those two statements and tell me if that makes sense to you. Um, well, yeah, tell me if that makes sense to you. Specifically, read that bottom sentence right here. Does this make sense in the context of mortgage or a visa card? Does it make sense? I really need everyone to make sense of this. If you cannot distinguish between which formula to use, there's no point in me giving you a formula because you'll never be able to use it in real life. Does this make sense to you in the context of a visa card? The money is growing, but you're trying to make it small. Does it make sense to you in the context of mortgage? You borrow money and you have to make it smaller, but it's trying to grow on its own. Does this contest make sense? Uh, does this make sense in the context of a retirement? You have a big amount and you need to spend it, but it's going to grow naturally on its own. All of that falls under present value and need. And you need to be able to use that formula. Let's go to our annuity. So I gave an idea. So you know, a regular annuity is adding to a sum that's already growing. Um, so there are present value annuities where you are subtracting from the sum that's already grown. Here is the argument behind. Um, where the formula comes from. Some of you don't, aren't interested in this. And again, it comes from that field of math that deals with patterns. So just bear with me for now. I am going to work through this. You do not have to follow everything, but I hope that you'll come to appreciate it. So Mr. Kim wants to create a scholarship that gives $500 every year to a Northern math student. That was one of my dreams, actually, um, to actually create a scholarship for like 10 or maybe 20 years. I think it's doable. And I would have done it based on like money I might have raised uh, dabbling into cryptocurrencies and uh, dabbling into NFTs and stuff like that back last year when it was trying to get really big. But um, life is catching up and it's getting really hard. Anyways, <clears throat> 20 years. So every year, right? So this is year zero. This is year one, this is year two, this is year three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. This is 17, 18, 19, and 22. Okay. <clears throat> oh. Let's see. Annuities. Annuities involve when you are trying to pay right now. Okay. Here's the thing. It's not that I am, okay, let's put it this way. If I am putting in money right here, $500, I am paying someone $500. 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 I'm paying someone $500. I'm paying someone $500. At the same time, on the side, I need to write something. If it's growing at 4.5% compounded annually and it pays out 4, 5, 5, 6, 7, 8, how much money is $500 right now if I wait one year? Let me change the, let me change the question. I need to pay someone $500 next year. Do I need $500 right now? I'll say it one more time. I need to pay someone $500 next year. Do I need $500 now? No. How much time do I have before I have to pay someone $500 next year? One. One year. And so this $500 was from earning interest 
for one year. Let me do a sample calculation. $500 is my final amount. How much is my present amount when I am earning interest for one year? <clears throat> so 500 is equal to P times this. If I want to get P all alone, I would multiply this by, or sorry, divide this by 1.045. Another way I can do this is P is equal to 500 to the power of 1.045, sorry, to the power of negative one. I wonder how many people remember that a denominator can be written as a numerator, but with an exponent of negative one. In other words, this 500 is 500 times 1.045 to the power of negative one. And how much is this? That would be 500 times 1.045 to the power of negative two. This amount earned money or earned interest for three years that means this could be x to the power of negative three. And then I'm gonna break, we're gonna calculate all this, don't worry. If this $500 had 20 years to earn interest, how much money would it have been 20 years ago? <clears throat> Oops. I'm going to work my calculator for you. The first $500 that I pay, it could actually have been equal to $478.47. What about the amount of money that I would have paid two years after? Right now, two years ago, it would have been $457.86. What about the money I would pay three years from now? How much is it? This would have been $438.15. And if I were to pay someone $500 20 years from now, it would have gained 20 years of interest. And so that $500, I actually only need $207.32 right now. And I could give you, Aiden, $500 in 20 years. Does that make sense? It grows. Every single one of these numbers are growing because I have time. I don't need... How much was that? $500 times 20 years. That's $10,000. I don't need $10,000 right now. How much do I need then? How much do I need right now? Present value. What is the present amount that I need right now if I want to accomplish $10,000 in 20 years? That's my formula. If you are ready, I will show you the formula that will add up all of these numbers for you in one go. It will give you how much money you need right now, the present value, to accomplish this feat over 20 years. Very different from what we were talking about for the past two days. If you are ready, oh, some people are still drawing, that's okay. If you are ready, please turn to the next page and take a look at the equation. I will do the equation here because I didn't give you much space in the next page. The present, oh, I don't agree. The present value that I need right now 
if I want to give someone $500 every year, is going to be following this formula. Look at the difference, people. Yesterday, I gave you this formula. Future value is equal to recurring payment, one plus R over N to the power of NT minus one, all divided by R over N. Today, the present value formula does the one minus first, not last. One minus one plus R over N, and it's to the power of the same exponent, but a negative. A different formula. Let's calculate it. What is my recurring payment? 500. What is my R value for this question? So what is my capital R? 500. What is my little r? I'll finish this for you then. The little r is 0 0.045. My time is going to be 20 years. And my n is annually, so it's just one. Lucky for us. So this is 0 0.045. Maybe I will write this a little bit again. Five hundred bracket one minus. 0 0.045 divided by one, close bracket, negative 20 times one, so negative 20, all over 0 0.045 over one. So now there's more stuff to deal with when you are working with exponent, working with your calculator. So you get some practice in, take out your calculator. Oops. I made a mistake. I forgot the one plus. Sorry. You probably would have caught that though. That's the power of negative 20. One minus that answer. I'll do it step by step for you. This is 500. And that bracket, you should have gotten 0 0.58535714 or something of that like. See if you can do that, because that's the hardest part. If you can get that, keep that bracket, then you're fine with your calculator skills and we can move on. And I think the amount of money you get to get $10,000 over time will surprise you. It's a, it's a one minus and then one plus inside. Okay, I'll pause the video because it might take some people a while. So assuming everyone was able to get the 0 0.585, let's continue. What's, what is the present value? Multiply that by 500 and divide by 0 0.045. What do you get? And? Yes. Everyone, compare that 
with what I said. 20 years, $500. If you have $6,500 right now, you can make it work. It will pay out 10,000 for you over 20 years. Now, 20 years is a lot of, lot of time, but now take this example and place it on things like retirement, hint, hint. Going to the next page, let's try some of these example questions. And I'll tell you right now, this, this question or these questions are there to try and help you work out your assignment better, okay? Part of Clara's retirement plan is to create an annuity that will pay her 50,000 a year for 25 years after she retires. Does that sound like something I might ask you in the assignment? She finds a plan where the money will grow at 6% per annum compounded annually and pays at the end of every period. So how much money, how much money is she expected to be paid? Here, $50,000 every year for how many years? 25. How much money is that? 50 times 25, that would be. Oh, I never got ready for it. <clears throat> One million two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So in essence, she's a millionaire, is she not? Technically, the annuity, her retirement plan is going to pay her a million dollars and more over a course of 25 years. Right? So how much does she need at the time of retirement? So in other words, what is my PV? So at this point, I want to mention once again, read the question. Am I trying to make the money grow bigger and bigger? Or am I taking money away as it's growing bigger and bigger? Right? It's paying her. Like she's taking the money away from the pot. That's how I know it's present value. So that means, what's my recurring payment? Right. Capital R is 50,000. My interest rate is 0 0.06. My uh, and the compounding period is once a year. The amount of time is 25. Let's put it together. PV equals 50,000 multiplied by be careful of the formula, it's one minus, one plus 0 0.06 over one to the power of negative 25 times one, all over 0 0.06 divided by one. So I will wait once again and pause this video. What does this turn into? Please do this exercise. So I don't know if you had a chance, but or you're just being quiet, but I'll show you what this amounts to. If I want over 25 years, $1.25 million, all I need right now is this much and just stop. $600,000 will continue to grow in interest while I spend a little bit at a time. So part C asks, so how much did they earn in interest? Well, I'm gonna take how much I will get from the bank minus how much I have, my actual money, and the leftover must be the interest that I earn. I earned 610,000 $832 in interest. That's crazy. And what is that? That's only because you had a pot of money and you're taking a little bit out at a time while the rest continues to grow. It's insane. But that's math and that's reality. 
You don't need a million dollars to retire. As long as you're living modestly, right? <clears throat> Number two is a final example, because again, you'll have a question like this in your assignment. I think it'll be very useful to try a question like this. As a young professional, you purchase your first home. This might actually apply to you in real life. Let's say you spent $400,000 from the bank. Now that seems like a lot of money, but you'll grow into it. The mortgage rate at time of purchase is 3.4% compounded monthly, and you will pay it back in 30 years. So typically a mortgage is how many years? Anyone know? A typical mortgage? 25. That's, that's the standard. You could pay it off earlier if you want to. Uh, you could ask for an extension of 30 years if you want to, but typically the standard is 25. I'm going to write all this down right now. My, my time is 30 years. My R is 0 0.034. I am borrowing and I'm doing everything compounded monthly, so that's the 12. I borrowed $400,000 now. My present value is that much. This is the big pot of money that I'm starting with. Do you see why I might label that as PV? I hope. Calculate your monthly payment. In other words, what is my capital R? My formula is this, PV equals capital R, one minus one plus R over N, negative NT, all over R over N. <clears throat> 400,000 dollars is what I need to pay back. So that's how much money I have right now, and it's snowballing. I am giving money or paying money so that I can make that smaller. One minus one plus 0 0.034 over 12, all to the power of negative 12 times 30, that's 360, negative, all over 0 0.034. Opposed to me waiting for you, I will do that myself and tell you what the answer is. I hope that you will get some practice in solving it. Because when the assignment comes along, it's going to be a free-for-all. Okay. The recurring payment every month is $1,773.92. And this is a scary part. Ready? If this is how much money you are paying back every month, how many months are there in a year? 12. How many years am I doing this? 30. And, and this is how much money I'm paying back every month. I'm going to multiply 1773.92 times 12 times 30. Guess what? How much money are you actually paying the bank? Not 400,000. You have to pay the bank 638,000. So the bank has this pot of money. They lend it to you, and then they just sit there for 30 years, and they will get $200,000 for free as a, as a thank you for lending you money. So I think I told you this before. Where does the bank get their money? So 
or maybe it was my grade nine because they're doing a bit of a finance thing right now as well. They get this money from people who, uh, you know, who invest their money with them. Anyone here have a bank account? Do you get like 0.5% from them every year or something? Why are they giving you that interest? Because they'll take your money and give it to someone who needs to buy a house. They're borrowing the money from you to do this. So they give you your 0.5%, but they will earn 3.4%. That's what they're doing. And so the more customers that they have, the better. So why would they give you, oh, open a bank account with us and we'll give you $200 to start. Or, you know, open a visa account with us and you'll get points of blah, 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 blah. Right? It's all a business. And banks will do everything they can. Banks will never lose that money. They will always work and work the percentage in their favor so that they will always be around. That's not necessarily a bad thing because they do provide services that we need as well. But there it is. These are two amazing examples for present value annuity. I hope that you will not do the assignment today, but rather focus on these questions. Tomorrow, I'm going to do one more example of a PV, another example of a PV where you have to calculate R, and the rest of class on Thursday, and the rest of class on Friday, and so on and so forth, is all going to be devoted to doing well on this final assignment. Remember, the final assignment is worth a little bit more than a typical test. So it is in your best interest to brush up on whether you're using FV or PV or just regular compound interest and go from there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ah, what, what, what I did to calculate R was basically solve this in the calculator and then made a 400,000 divided by that number. Because yeah. you're doing algebra. That's it. And you should get your R. And uh, yeah, to calculate the total amount of interest you pay the bank, you subtract it, it would have been $238,000, 611 and 20. I think you could probably figure that out. Okay, I'm gonna pause the video here. Uh, my uh, task for you, we only have about 20 something minutes left. Try some more of these practice questions that I provided from the text with the answer key on the last page. And then tomorrow will be like 80% assignment day. And it just be assignment. Day. Today, this is literally the last lesson of the year. From here on, it's just your big finance assignment, your retirement assignment, and then culminate. So in a sense, congratulations, you basically made it. Like there's, there's nothing left. Uh, there is one big hurdle, of course. You can't forget your factoring. You can't forget your SOCATOA because your culminating might use it. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Your task right now is to brush up on this so that your assignment will be done a lot faster. Okay?